Hello everyone, Bernina Jeff here at High Fashion Sewing in Grand Junction, Colorado. I am going to put together a compilation of 14 different tips and tricks for your 7 series, your 5 series, and your 4 series Berninas, anyone that has the black bobbin case. And these tips are something you probably won't find in your manual, but you will really appreciate them because they're going to help you keep sewing and not have to stop and go to a dealer or try to figure out what's the matter. I have a series of five or six videos that have these independently, so I thought putting them all together in one video so you can store it and uh, have it handy would be much easier for you to go through. So, 14 items. First thing I'm going to show you is how to oil the fast and easiest way, and I also sell the best oiler dispenser, which is this long two-inch tip and it uh, has a non-leak uh, scabbard tip to it and you have plenty of oil to get you through all your projects. So we are going to oil this from the top down instead of taking all this apart and oiling it. This is approved by Bernina. We actually have it in a July 2019 technical bulletin that this is an improved way to oil it. It's a lot quicker. So first thing I'm going to do is put my finger on this bullseye here to get the plate off. So I Take the plate off, I lift it up, take the plate off. Now, it's kind of hard with the camera. There's a shiny spot. Do you see that shiny spot moving back and forth? Yeah. The tip of that is very sharp, and that's where you, just past the tip on that shiny area is where you want to put one drip of oil. And I do that every time I start sewing. And then after about every two and a half or three hours, you'll start hearing a clitter clatter down in here. So that's time to give another drip of oil. So it's good for about two hours. Of, so that's a lot easier way to oil the machine. Now about every month or so, you do need to open up your uh, bobbin area and take out the hook. So this is a round hook area. And every few weeks or every month or so, there's two little round pads in there. And those need a drip of oil in them too. You can tell when they need it because the oil just soaks right in. So I am going to use this oiler I sell. You can call up the shop and order these oilers. I sell them at $12 each. That includes shipping. And we usually ship out the same day uh, you order them. So that is oiled now. Now if we look inside here, you will see two dots, a central metal piece and then a dot, sometimes it's silver, sometimes it's green. I put that at six o'clock straight down. And then if you look at your hook, there's a hole in the bottom. See that round circle hole? You face that round circle hole, light, turn it down to, as you're looking at it, 12 o'clock, line that up, push this up, and if it doesn't click in, what you do is you just rotate the hand wheel about a quarter turn left to right and it will pop right in there. It's a lot easier than fighting it. But while we have this open, I'm going to show you one place to look for threads. If you're having troubles with your upper thread breaking and just poor stitch quality, what you're going to want to look for is down inside this hook driver area, there's these little um, drivers, these little pins that, almost pins, these little nubs that come up. Thread will wrap around these. You'll actually take a tweezers and pull that thread out and you won't have the issue of your thread breaking. The other thing, the best tweezers in the whole world are the Bernina tweezers. I sell these guys. We're actually out of them right now. These Bernina tweezers are offset and they'll grab a thread and just take care of any of your repair maintenance. You gotta watch it. Your husband will grab these for fly fishing or his workbench. So you might as well just buy two to begin with. So I'm gonna put the hook back in. The cradle method, this is what I call this. So if it doesn't line up, rotate the hand wheel. Oh, look at, see, it snapped right in there. And you're gonna wanna make sure that this little latch over here is all the way in. So I'm gonna give it a little push and that just snapped the rest of the way in. Okay. While I have this open again, the bottom of your needle plate has three little clips. Those little clips, if you don't get them lined up right, they'll bend 
a little askew and you try to bend it straight and it breaks right off. You don't need to buy a $60 needle plate. There's about two or three dollars these little clips and a lot of my uh, viewers have just bought two or three just to have on hand because all it takes is a little baby screwdriver. Take that screw out, put it back in. There's a hole to, for the little dimple and there's a hole for the screw. You can't mess it up. Now, what will happen occasionally is you will have your bobbin case a little askew and you'll push it in and now you push and you push and you push, it won't come out. Nothing you do will that, that bobbin case is stuck in there and it's, you need, you need to get it out. There's no, no way to pushing that lever. That's, so what you need to do is you need to latch, unlatch that and pull on this so the whole unit comes out. This is a little fussy because there's not as much room now for this whole unit to come out. And what you got is you got this big circle with the sharp tip that's called the hook. And this is where the oil goes is outside edge. Yeah. But this, no matter what you do, push on that, it doesn't come out. So we're going to take our little screwdriver and there's a hole, a circle hole on the back of this hook. It almost takes three hands. I hold the screwdriver straight up and with the other hand, I push in the latch and I tap it on the table like that and it will it will release that bobbin and case and bobbin without damaging anything. And you wouldn't believe how many thank yous I've gotten on YouTube because they were in the middle of a project, they're four hours away from their dealer and they got jammed like that. So it's not gonna hurt anything. If it's a constant issue, you may wanna see your dealer because there may be an issue with the latch here or your bobbin case. So both of those parts are uh, available. I'm gonna line this up at six o'clock again, put this at noon and rotate, pop it in, make sure that's latched. So that's your bobbin area. So while we have the plate off, the other thing is you'll get a, a warning on your screen saying, please clean thread catcher. Well, you look in your manual, there's nothing about cleaning a thread catcher. Or if there is, it's really hard to find. So I'm gonna show you the easy way to clean your thread catcher. So we're going to, on the five series, we have to touch home to find our sprockets or gears. These are our settings. On the seven series, it's right along the bottom row. So we're gonna hit our settings icon. And then you're gonna hit the icon that looks like a sewing machine. Then we're gonna get an icon that looks like a wrench. And then we're going to go to an icon that looks like a sweep. If you don't know what these icons mean, you can always hit the question mark and then the icon. And look at that, cleaning the thread catcher. Touch the icon, clean the thread catcher according to instructions. So I'm gonna hit that, clean the thread catcher. So, remove the presser foot and needle, okay? There's presser foot, the needle, now, I'm also gonna show you the best way to remove the thread because I don't want that thread in there either. So don't just pull your thread out through the back. What you wanna do is you wanna reach to the closest to the machine there on the thread guide and pull the thread forward. You always want to keep the thread going the same direction. If you keep pulling it backwards, even though you're wasting two foot of thread, it's gonna cost you $100 to have a technician come in here and clean this tension unit. Because all that debris, if you keep pulling that thread backwards, is going to accumulate in the tightest spot, which is the tension unit. And pretty soon the machine won't sew and you'll have to have it maintained. So that's just a good preventative maintenance. Remove, let's lower the feed dogs, it says. So lower the feed dogs, remove the stitch plate. I've done that. Now this is where it gets really tricky. What you want to do is, uh, with the stylist or your finger, you want to select this link. This is a little blue line, it's called the link, and it, it's really touchy. So I just heard it beep, and you had a fraction of a hourglass show up. Now, this is where most of my customers say, well, I did that, nothing happened. Well, now it says, touch the automatic thread cutter button. That's right here on your machine head. So I'm gonna touch that. And now the machine took a rotation and it slid the thread catcher off to the right-hand side. Now you can pick any threads, see if there's any debris in there, brush it out with the brush.
Okay. And that's where the tweezers come in handy again. Now it says move the thread catcher in. I'm going to touch this. Okay, it beeped. And it says now touch the automatic cutter. Watch, watch it go back to the left. That's the proper sequence you want to see. And now the, uh, everything else is initialized and it's turned your cutter sequence counter to zero. So now it'll go five or 600 times without warning you about that. So that's the cleaning the thread catcher process. So I'm gonna close my menu here. And then we just kind of reassemble. I have found the best way to put the needle plate back on is angle it from the right hand side downward to the left, line up those two pins and then push straight down with your right finger. And make sure that it's totally flush. If one, I've had it happen where one side wasn't all the way in and I go to sew and my fabric doesn't move. That's because that guy was up and the feed dogs couldn't come high enough to uh, get through the, the uh, plate. So now some of our fingers are better than others. My fingers are still pretty nimble, but when I get it up there and I can't reach in there. Bernina makes this needle grabber, this red needle grabber. It's got a baby hook there and I put the needle in that hook and it holds it, put the flat to the back. And then now I can fiddle and find that hole so much easier. Then I push the button and it uh, unlatches. So I'm gonna show you that. See that? It's so good, it'll just hold on there. So if I loosen it, it's out. These needle grabbers, I've finally started buying them 20 at a time because my viewers love them so much. All right. So on the 5 Series, when we go to thread this machine, um, you got a needle thread that comes out. You bring your thread across. And look over here. There's a special little gray thread cutter and holder. The 7 Series do not have this feature. This is a feature that you can add yourself to your 7 Series. It is a peel and stick. So you want to put it on. Uh, I have a whole video just on how to put it on. So you want to prep the area with a alcohol swab, peel it off and stick it on there like that to where I'll demonstrate how to use that thread cutter. So I'm gonna grab the thread here. I'm gonna grab it, pull it on me. So best way to thread your machine is to floss your thread between two fingers Make sure it snaps into that back guide. Then I keep a little pressure on my, my right hand. It's a little bit of sewing yoga. It's good for your, your shoulders. And I kind of feel everything snap into place. I push back and down. I'm, I'm hearing this, all these little clicks. And that's what I'm wanting to hear. Now when I let go, I know all my threads in the right guides. I bring the thread or halfway down. I see people wrap it around this way. I like to wrap it around from the left and under. And then that's only halfway down. Now I push it the rest of the way down and a lot of my customers stop right here. Well, that threader head is not engaged in the eye of the needle. You have to, you have to give it a pretty good, not a jolt, but a good push. Then you push it and you bring the thread and you tuck it into that little slot and look underneath here, there's that little gray cutter I showed you about. It cuts the thread and holds it. Now when I let it up, it pulls just the right amount of thread and your needle is threaded. I mean, I can sit here and do it 100 times in a row. Um, my customers have to do it three times in a row before they pass my test. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they're there for a little while and get a little frustrated, but if you do it three times in a row, that helps your muscle memory and you can all of a sudden get it. So I'm going to show you one more time. I don't use a whole lot of thread, but with this cutter, it doesn't matter how much it's hanging down there. Remember, halfway down, I use my left thumb to guide that thread around that post. Then I bring it the rest of the way to engage that all the way in, pop it in there. I use the cutter and let it go nice and slow. And then I pull that little loop the rest of the way through. I'm going to be a while I'm recording. No. All right. 
Now, Neil Shredded, you can do this with the foot on or not. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna show you what happens occasionally is this metal part on the needle threader bangs against something or the it'll break off or your needle threader isn't working at all. So with it most of the way down, bring your fingernail and if you pull down on the top of that light gray area, it'll snap right off. These are about 40 to $50 depending upon your dealer pricing and you can purchase those and put them on yourself. So to put it back on, you can bring this guy halfway down again and line them up. And there's a black roll pin in here and he goes into that slot and you wanna make sure it snaps all the way in. There's a little keyhole that that has to slot it, snap into. If it doesn't snap into it, you may break your little knee, your needle hook that goes in there. So if you can't get these from your dealer, give me a call, we'll see how you can Maybe order those here. All right, we're down to number seven. Uh, and number eight, we just showed you the needle threader and holder and how to do that. All right, now mention that don't over tighten your needle screw here. If you over tighten that, there's a chance that the tip of that needle screw will break off and then it jams everything up. This could be a two or three hundred dollar issue depending upon your dealer. I actually have a less expensive way. So I'm gonna show you what the tip of this needle screw looks like. See, it's nice and tapered. If you're sewing and you, you can't get your needle out, take that screw all the way out and it may be flat and broken off the edge. If it is flat and broken, that is time to go see your dealer because that's the only way you're gonna be able to sew again. Um, and it's just, uh, an issue that there's something with that screw, if you over tighten it, it'll break off there. So just wanna, you want it tight enough to where it's not gonna come out, but you don't wanna white knuckle tight that uh, screw. All right, here's one I get almost all the time. And um, I'm gonna show you how to turn your sewing light back on. What happens is uh, people will, uh, turn on their machine and all of a sudden the machine lights up here on the screen but there's no lights under the sewing area. So when you turn your machine on this is what you get. You got your regular menu and no lights here. And people say, well, how much is a new sewing light? I said, it's not a sewing light. It's a issue that it got turned off accidentally. And I've seen it just turn off by handling and carrying it. So I don't know why. So we're gonna go into, on the five series and the four series, we're gonna go into home. On the seven series, it's already a settings with the gears right there. So we're gonna to touch our gear and we're gonna go into our sewing machine icon. And there's a light bulb. That light bulb gives us display settings so we can change our display settings. And here's where we turn our light on. That's simple as that. And I've had so many people just thank me so much for that. Now, the other issue is they will turn on their machine and all of a sudden nothing on their screen responds to their touch. That's called touch screen calibration. And I call it, it's either jammed or whatever. And what happens oh. is uh, we somehow get into the setting page and we go into the sewing machine and we go into here. Oops, it's not there. Even the best of them forget where all these are. Oh, this is because this is the five series. Let's swing over to the seven series real quick. And while we're swinging over there, I'm gonna show you that occasionally when you got the seven series, the thread gets way down here and it will come out of this uh, rear thread guide. So I found you can take a wonder clip with a little command strip on the back. So there's a little command strip and you stick it just to the right hand side of that screw. And every time you thread your machine, you just push down there and the, that'll keep the thread from jumping out of that guide. Bernina's re response to that issue is use a thread net every time you put thread on your machine. And 
that's just a lot of extra work for me. All right, coming around to the 7 Series. And what happens on the 7 Series is the screen will, has no response. No matter where you push, nothing happens. So we're going to go into the settings. And now we're going to go into our machine. And we have this um, icon right here. So before we push the icon, we want to make sure we have a stylist. So, and you must follow through the three touches once this is touched. I'm thinking what happens is customers get into here and they don't want to be in here, so they just turn their machine off. So the machine gets confused, so it doesn't line up. So you, there's a bullseye there, just touch it. You want to touch it as close. Don't put your knuckles on the screen because it'll respond to the knuckle. And that's it. But what happens is <coughs> it is so messed up that you can't even get into the menu. So you turn your machine off. And see this little needle positioner, left to right? You hold both of those buttons in, turn your machine on, and it'll come automatically up to the screen calibration. So I'm giving it a second, it's booting up, and it'll come up to the white screen. And again, you can't bypass it, you have to use your stylus to uh, uh, touch those uh, three um, bullseyes. So it takes a while, you have to keep very patient here. It's booting up, it's thinking hard, and now it's up to that screen. Bernina knew they had to put a back door in because this was happening. Yep, didn't get it. There we go. And then it will go right to your sewing mode. Now if you have a Q20 or Q24 that has this, what you do is you hold on to the screen, you turn the machine off, Keep your finger on the screen and then turn it on and the calibration screen will come on. That's only in the Q-Series. All right. Now, I get a lot of questions on the blue screen of death. It's called a 1010 main sync error. And what the machine does is every time it boots on, it is turning this hand wheel a little bit to initiate all of its starting point. So if I turn it on and I hold on to the hand wheel, I'll probably get a, uh, a blue screen, what I call the blue screen of death. And it's like the blue screen when your computer doesn't boot up. It's like, what do I do? So I'm gonna try to generate this issue and watch, it'll be fine. But anyway, I'm holding on to the hand wheel. The machine actually, if it cannot turn, the hand wheel, it protects itself. It protects itself either with this blue screen or with uh, gears. You'll see two big gears. Yeah, it didn't happen that way. It wasn't jammed up. Usually when you get the main sink error, there's thread jammed down in the bottom here somewhere or the, the hand wheel can't turn. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just get into the normal sewing mode and jam it up to show you the gears. It's always asking me on um, all these things we have to do, step by step. Okay, so I want to go into sewing and just always follow the screen. If you get lost, just follow the screen. If you get lost, turn the machine off and follow the screen. It's not going to hurt to turn the machine off and on. So I'm going to go ahead and sew for a second here and then jam the machine and we'll get the gears. So I'm holding on to the hand wheel and the machine is attempting to turn the hand wheel. I felt it trying to turn and these scare the heck out of most of my customers. It's, uh oh, I just broke my machine. It, it is not a problem at all. A lot of times it'll give you a, a verbiage of what to do. This one, it didn't have any verbiage, so we're just going to clear it. What it tells you is there's a bind in the machine. Maybe the needle's hitting the plate. Maybe there's thread wrapped around somewhere. So you need to go find that out. What I do when that happens is I will hand turn the machine. And if the hand machine turns easily, I will go ahead and try to continue sewing. 
Okay, so let's see what happens. Happy camper. So that's how you clear either the blue screen, main sink, 1010 error, or the gears. Now, another thing a lot of my customers have, this doesn't happen on the 5 Series as much, but the 7 Series, these are called multifunction knobs. And when you're using those, they will actually make the stitch width, or the stitch length longer or shorter. And what happens in time, either the board or the, the post that goes into the machine breaks off inside there. And on the 7 Series, you'll turn this and it will be sporadic or zero uh, function at all. So that is something that you'll need to go to your dealer. They'll take the machine apart and put new knobs on. But there's a workaround. So you need to get a project down or you just don't care to have those knobs fixed. You can touch this little area in the sewing area and if you touch that little number where it says 3.3 or whatever it says now you can change your width with the screen so if i want to change my length i can change my length this way so that's your workaround if your knobs are not working there's a workaround on almost everything with the sewing machine all right now we just mentioned about the wonder clip so there you have 14 of my, my most important things to know about your 7 series, your 5 series, and your 4 series Berninas. And this will keep you sewing. Remember to subscribe. If you subscribe, it really helps my channel. And I'll be putting more and more of these out, and you'll know when the next one comes. So uh, if you want to call the shop and order anything, the phone number is 970-256-1293. Um, or you can find us on Google Maps. It's High Fashion Sewing Machines and Quilt Shop. And the high is spelled H-I, like hi. Thank you very much. This is Jeff, Bernie and Jeff at High Fashion. Thanks.